Hi folks, and welcome to another episode of Tableau in Two Minutes. Today we're going to be covering how you can perform complex joins within the Tableau Data Connection interface. Uh, we're going to use some CSVs for that, uh, but you can do it with any sort of table that you want. Um, so let's go ahead and connect to the folder that has our CSVs in it. Uh, we're going to use some data that came from a... Kaggle competition involving grocery store predictions. And I've gone ahead and I've changed this around a bit in order to make it work for our purposes. But it's uh, fundamentally the same data that it was before. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've created a, or sorry, I've connected to the sort of main table. That's the first thing that you'll want to connect to when you do a complex join is really what is the fundamental table, what is the, the one with the most detail in it that we want to connect to. Now, this covers dates out through about the 2nd of January 2013, but we have a second one here that covers dates beyond that. So we're actually going to union these two together. So let's drag this one out. You can see we just drag it right below our main train sample, and this is going to give us a union. And you see it created this table name column. We don't really need that, but now we have a lot more data in our workbook. All right, now let's go ahead and join all of our other variables to it. So we'll start off with the stores. You can see we have a store number here, so we want to get a bit more detail about our stores. We'll drag out the store CSV. This is where our join criteria is set. You can see that it's automatically picked store number since we have a store number variable in both data sets. That's good. That's what we want it to do. Now you'll note that in our store data set, we have this variable called cluster. Well, I created an additional list of names of people who might be responsible for what happens in those clusters. Again, this would be the equivalent of having maybe a sales leader or some other sort of leader that you might want to join on. So we have our roster here of who is responsible for which cluster. We can drag that out. And now you'll see that our join criteria is joining on cluster from the stores CSV. And it's giving us our names. There we go, our names right here from the cluster names CSV. Now, let's say there's another, there's a handful of other things that we might want to join to this. We have uh, the item number right here for all of the items uh, within or that were sold. What is that item? Can we get a bit more detail about that? Well, we have a CSV for that here. We're going to drag that out. Um, again, you'll see it automatically hooks up as an inner join on the item number. Now, if you're not familiar with how SQL joins work, an inner join will take only rows in this table that have a corresponding value in this table. Now, for the sake of this data, that's probably okay. If we had something that was incomplete, we might wanna change that to a left join, which is gonna take everything in the left-hand table, and it's gonna take everything that has a value in the right-hand table, otherwise it's gonna make, it, uh, make it null. Now, we can continue pulling these out as we go through. This is the number of daily transactions. I believe that's by store, <clears throat> excuse me. Yep, so again, we've tagged onto store number. Uh, now, where it becomes a little bit interesting is in this holiday events table. So we'll drag out our holiday events table. And you can see that first of all, it joins on date. But there are other items in here that we may want to join on. So you can see once we open up by clicking on the down arrows, we open up either of these pieces. Uh, we can also join, for example, on state, if we wanted to join on state based on the locale for a particular holiday. Um, we're not going to do that. That's not actually 100% relevant. It doesn't quite work in the way that we would like it to, uh, or the way that I would like it to in order to demonstrate it. But you could join on, say, date. Uh, and city name, if you wanted to do that, if there were certain holidays that only appeared in certain cities. The other thing we have is we have a list of oil prices by date. So let's go ahead and drag out our list of oil prices by date. Now, in this case, you can see that it didn't populate anything 
within our join clause. The reason it didn't populate anything within our join clause is because none of the column names match between the two data sources. So you can see in the oil data set, our date column is called price date. So we're gonna set that as the join column for oil. And then under the data source, we're gonna go ahead and select date. And then it's gonna join our two data sets together properly. Once we've done that, you can see that we have a relatively complex table structure in here uh, with our holidays. We actually wanna make this a left join since we don't necessarily, if there is no holiday, obviously we still want to include the data in our analysis. So just to recap, we created our base table using the most uh, detailed data that we have, which is this what's called the train dash sample data set that has the uh, individual transactions per store per product. Uh, and then we joined everything else to it to give us some supplementary information about holidays, about what the item is, uh, about what the price of oil was on that particular day, what the stores are and where they're located, along with a sales roster that helps understand who might support each of these stores. Um, as well as a data set that shows us how many total transactions for each of these stores had per day. And we've joined these all together in a single Tableau workbook so that when we go to our first sheet, oh, apparently we have too many, too many rows for Tableau public. So this gives us more than 15 million rows of data. So we need to add a data source filter, that's fine. We'll just add one on city, don't really care, that one will do. And then it'll take a while with a complex join like this and that many rows, it's gonna take a while to filter everything down before it allows us to take a look at our data. But the bottom line is you can create these very elaborate joins within Tableau and allow Tableau to do the heavy lifting without having to go directly to your data source and write the SQL. One of the downsides of this though, is that this obviously does take longer as we're discovering with this preparing data dialog box that's popped up. So one of the things to bear in mind is that this is a great way to pull things together quickly in order to do exploratory analysis. It's not necessarily a great way to put a, a data source into production with all of these joins behind it. You may want to create an extract. Uh, you may want to move this SQL date, the SQL um, piece to the database, if that makes sense depending on what your exact parameters are, how you're pulling all these tables together, you may wanna find a different way of doing it other than through Tableau if you want to connect live to the data source and you want a workbook that performs well. So uh, as you can see, within that complex database, we've got all of our different tables on the left-hand side here, and we have all of the fields within them under are grouped under each of the uh, of the tables. So super helpful of Tableau to organize them that way so that you can find the table you're looking for, particularly if you have similar sounding or duplicate names. So that about does it for this episode of Tableau in two minutes. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like what you hear and you'd like to get more Tableau tips and tricks, then please subscribe to our channel and we will see you next time.